What's happening guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. Man. So we're back on the Biscayne. Now where we left it last, I had kind of pieced together uh, this side with some fiberglass and a bunch of welding and all that. Now we have not finished this side. So we gotta get that taken care of. But there's actually been a heck of a lot going on and I gotta address a few things. We're gonna finish up the door jam. We're gonna get this side and primer on this video for sure. But I have been mix matching tires on Nova's to this thing. Just, I don't even know, been on an absolute spree. I bought uh, another set here. Look at these. American Racing is like vintage jobbies. They're not the, they're the cast ones. I like the ones with the gray centers, but hey, beggars can't be choosers when it comes to vintage wheels. We got the wheels that were on the Biscayne now on the Nova, because as I've determined, the big block added a little weight on the front end. We're gonna have to deal with that. So these tires were on there, but these are 28 inch tall Mickey Thompsons. And they were rubbing. They don't look too bad on this thing. The back, I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm gonna take a quick break right away here and run out and buy more wheels yet again because I can't help myself. A set of steel wheels, I got a couple of Pro Tracks and two, not four, but two dog dish hubcaps for Nova. So we got some running around to do, but we'll get all that jumbled in the background. Also work on this thing because I want it looking like this, but on the other side, put some primer on it, get the door jam dialed. I don't think this one even, oh yeah, we got, we got some work ahead of us. I forgot where I exactly was at. And we got to fix a wheel arch. Ugh, should be a good day. Oh, and I forgot to mention, last one to move this thing, she didn't start. Dead battery, bad connections, I don't know what, but it's a lump in the garage. Maybe I'll get on that too. All right, so we're down. Work on this junk. So obviously we gotta fill in that little bit of a gap, give it a little bit more structure. Now what I did, a lot of people use beer boxes, but I find Coke boxes are better, uh, cause I'm not generate. But uh, we use a little, template so you know mark bottom got it kind of going up around there now it's going to have some kind of goofy curves and whatnot in it but that'll give us a pretty good idea that we got to cut out of our scraps so we'll store that nicely now in the meantime before we damn it before we do that we have to adjust this little striker now a few videos ago i think i showed i got a brand new uh latch so we got that working i do have to do some adjustment because the uh the push button doesn't have enough push to make it happen, but there's a little plastic piece or something that's broken off. Anyway, when I put on a little latch, so we'll go ahead and just give this a thread in there. It's at its maximum amount of adjustment and the door won't close, I don't feel sure there. But the striker has to go up probably an inch or so. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut in the backside this little plate in the back that's threaded, we're gonna lift it up. I'm gonna jam my grinder in here. We're gonna oblong this hole up a little bit. So that'll go right there. Then we can adjust it any way we want. Make sure the door is closing properly. Make sure our gaps are good. And then just keep welding metal till it's uh, not looking like crap. So I'll get set up. I might just kind of cut this out on my own and it's tight to get in there and uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so we got this unit all out, uh, cut my little hole, we got the piece out, and I'll weld it back together. Now this is what is on the back side, just kind of like a big captured nut. Obviously this just goes in, kind of hard to do one-handed, but uh, this will tighten up, and that's what holds your striker. And you can adjust it with washers and all sorts of stuff. So that's that. Um, anyways, so what we're gonna do now is oblong this hole upwards, if you got, oh, hang on, stupid airline. This tool right here is worth its weight in gold. This is a 3M one, this was a few dollars, but they sell them knockoffs now. This is great for spot welds, which we did in there. But also if you want to just kind of elongate this, we're going to go ahead and just box that around to lift it up kind of a half inch or so. It's not, it's not too, too crazy. And the other one, uh, 
you can just barely see the bottom of the hole when the, where this ended up being. Then we can adjust it sideways, up and down, whatever we got to do. So that works out just fine. Uh, this, oh, here, I'll show you this. This is the other, or a door latch door handle. It has this little plastic piece on there. This is what we're missing on this guy. So if it'll show up or not in there, I can push that. It just isn't having enough travel. So I got either take that out and weld a couple of little globs on it for a little bit of spacing or switch over this plastic thing or whatever. So I'll do that real quick also. Before we do that, I want to show you guys exactly how we're going to line this up and make the door latch because that's uh, it's a pretty important part of this whole door latch endeavor of a two-door conversion. It's uh, making the door close, believe it or not, important part. Once you get that in there, then I'll just buzz this down real quick with the flap disc and uh, get it ready to weld and we'll cut our little piece out. Pretty simple, boring, but simple. Okay, so I actually adjusted the door stri or, uh, handle, I should say, so it's working good. So now we're going to do it. You're kind of upside down in the video. Uh, this is just best for the camera. So that's the bottom of the door. That's the top. So we're going to put the piece in or the grinder in, go up and just oblong this out. And then we can test fit that in there. So earmuffs on, safety glasses. So just real quick there, you can see we just oblong the hole up. So instead of being there, it'll be there. Whoop. Instead of being there, it'll be there. Probably half inch is all it had to go up. So we'll get this uh, dialed together, that piece in the back. We'll see if the door latches. Bolted together so you can see where the original one was. It's up you know, inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. But uh, bam, fits not bad. You know, a little hammering in this top area there, but could be the door itself, let's be honest. But it does fit nice. Huh? Well, oh, that was my fault. This needs a little bit of love. It sticks in there like that. Might need a little, a little lube or mint. Oh. So I'm going to rip off this, uh, this piece. We'll go cut it out on the table, the plasma table. We'll weld in that door jam. Piece is all cut out. Yeah, look at that. Ugh. Everything seemed to work out pretty nice. I need a little gappy here and there up the top. That's eh, a bit of a gap, but we'll just go ahead and weld that right in. Then I don't know what I'm going to do up here. I might have to build another piece. I got to look at the other side, see what I did. I'm going to just bash it in. We'll see. But there you go. I'm going to set the camera up. We're going to buzz all this in. That's all dialed. This thing's really come together. Once you get that taken care of, I have to trim a little piece to go in there. We got to fix back there. Oh yeah, we got to fill in the door handles. Man, these four door conversions are a lot of screwing around. Maybe you should just buy a two door, eh? Anyway, I'm going to get set up, start blasting on this.
All right, well, I've been giving her with the buzz box on like 10, but uh, check it out. Look at that, nice little, little door jam. No one's gonna know the difference. Strong AF. I welded the bottom there to the sill. So that's all taken care of, look at that. It closes like a 60s hot rod should. Next we're gonna do is set the camera up. I'm gonna cut both these out. This one's all bent actually. Cut those out, we'll plug those up. And then probably work down here. I don't know how how crazy I'm gonna go. I'll probably just cut a little piece out, fold it over. I, I don't wanna tell you what I'm gonna do because honestly I don't even know. Get that welded. And then once I do that, we can grind this all up, fiberglass it, and uh, yeah. On to the next thing. Body filler, sanding, primer, never ends, but I'm excited to have this thing completely on the outside, roughed out to be a two-door. Then you start working on the inside and all the kind of stuff like that. But these holes here, these kill it. You gotta get rid of those. They really make it look like I just weld the back door shut. Okay, we have everything we need ready to go. So first things first, I already have the flap wheel on. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And this is a factory GM panel. It just doesn't look like it yet. So we'll get this cleaned up a little bit. Then I'll switch over to the zip disc. We'll randomly chop out whatever. And then we'll just trace those pieces onto the factory panel that uh, we didn't even know is a factory panel. So right now. Okay, so I cut that out when I did the dent that was in the door popped right out so it's almost perfect now that worked out great so the all the mangledness was in the the door structure or the handle structure those are my pieces i had to draw twice because uh, i have a curve in the middle and i trace it this way which i don't want i want it to be that way so i'll cut these two pieces out and then they should just fit right in like chevy intended And just like that, four ugly tack welds later, came Teller's door handle there basically. Next we're gonna use is this little piece of copper and I'll put it on the back side so the little gaps in between, it'll, uh, you can kinda, you can weld right in between there. If you do get any weld on this, it won't stick and it'll dissipate the heat a little bit and all those things, which uh, let's be honest, we really care about in the bodywork here. Back, weld it, and then, uh, yeah, we just got that bottom piece to do. We're really, we're jamming today. Okay, so little spoon. Murr got this from the US. It's imported. He paid tax on it. Don't worry. Well, that's a little hot. So here we have it. It went from looking like I just welded the back door shut and took the door handle off to someone has done a terrible weird patch on a proper two door. I uh, started getting in here a little bit, but that's all taken care of. Um, I gotta get in here with a actual rock disc. We'll do that after. All right, now we're gonna go be a little lazy, sit down and uh, take some more of that factory repair panel and see what we can finagle over here. It does look like, this can be the worst part of the whole car to fix. I know that, but it looks like the, the panel has quite a curve to it, but down here it looks like it really flattens out. So I think I might just cut that out, 
flatten her over and make it look like something with filler. So here's what I'm gonna do is I got the finest GM refrigerator door patch panel and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in, kind of size it up and I'm gonna fold it over. So the panel starts as a curve that goes out and it's just gonna roll itself. So I think I'm gonna loosely trace it. I'm gonna cut it around there. I'm gonna cut this all this old material off after, but kind of do that to somewhere like there. This has a bit of a curve, so we'll, we'll do that. So I'll just zip this off real quick. And we'll see what kind of bends we can put in this thing. Use the workbench. basically factory so now this I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out so I don't forget when I'm screwing around on this thing now it needs a bit of a curve outwards I say there ish so we'll go ahead and use the workbench here a bit of a little custom flare there so now we're coming out now we got to bend it back the other way so we'll go put this in the brake oh there's tires in front of it the trick is to have a nicely organized shop okay now I want it to do that the other marker oh we'll just eyeball it I'm gonna put my marker hang on pause take a brand new one out of the box this is where like HVAC guys friggin experts at this they can like make a box backwards, upside down. I don't have those skills. Oh, wearing glasses. So I'll put her in here. Hopefully it doesn't bend, screw my bend up too bad. So look at that, we got a curve one way than the other. We'll see what else we can butcher with this. We're just kind of thinking on the fly here. That's not really like us. Usually we really plan things out. Well, that's not bad. So then if I do, uh -huh. there and there, we a 90. So that's got to fold that way. Mark the back in case that's the way it wants to be on the brake. Now we're definitely, it's not going to be perfect, perfect. I know that's shocking, but let's see it's a pretty good idea. The wheel well, luckily it's got a big curve here, but right about there, it really straightens out. So I got to fold that that way. Let's see what we can do here. I tell you these, uh, Knock off brakes and stuff like that. They're worth their money. Okay, I want it doing there. Give it a full 90. There we go. Trim that down, see how it's gonna fit before I cut the other piece off. I'm pretty impressed. Kind of follows the shape. This can use a little more. It did my first bend kind of flattened out. 
while you're putting in the brake. But I'll get the other piece trimmed out. I'll see how this fits in there. I got to trim that off too, but pretty good start. Well, there's a piece in there, far from perfect, but it has the roundabout shape and it's good for filler. Um, up next, I'm going to just grind everything down. Needs uh, a little bit of final touches and the stone up in there. Um, people keep telling me in, in the comments, well, not everybody, just a few people, and that's fine. By all means, give your opinion in the comments. They're saying, you know, filler, this and that, you should do a better job and all these things. Man, this is a thousand dollar car. We're trying to kind of patina match it. It is what it is. It had a big rust tool. Now it's got a piece of metal in there in the roundabout shape, and we're gonna put some filler on it. Are we gonna use a little more than maybe some people would like? Sure, but you know what? It's gonna be fine. Look at this, this door has got, I don't know, whatever that is, quarter inch or something like that, or maybe a little less, where the filler in, uh, up in this door, for sure it does. The other side also had it. These doors sat outside in the elements for 30 years. Like they have moss and stuff on them. So, Filler lasts, it's fine, it's the way she goes. It's the way I'm doing it. This is not a tutorial by any means. If anything, hopefully I'm just motivating you to get off your ass after you watch this video and after you've subscribed, get out to the garage and go work on your project that's stalled or you're not working on it or you need a little bit of effort. Let's get to grinding. Danny's gonna get to reading. So I always give you my speech about body filler and filler and how we're gonna go ahead and take care of this. So anyways, we're all welded up, it's all ground down, and we're gonna bad chad the hell out of this thing. And I mean that with all due respect. I love that guy, he uses filler, and he, he calls it how it is. Hot rods, show cars, everything has filler in it, so get over it. Now this, we're probably using too much, feel free to tell me. Uh, people are asking, I guess, in the last one, it's long strand, uh, fiberglass body filler basically. So it's just regular body filler kind of resin stuff, but it has fiberglass stuff in it. So instead of having like fiberglass cloth and sheets, this is all kind of mixed up in there. You can kind of see that's what it does. So it starts off purple. You put the hardener in there and it turns like this greenishy kind of color. Eh, it's pretty good. Now, everyone loves it. When I say schmoo it, we're gonna schmoo the hell out of this. So we got this all taken care of. So the first layer to kind of seal the weld and all that is going to be fiberglass. We're going to let this kind of harden up a little bit and then we're going to uh, grind it down real quick and then go over it with body filler. So it's just kind of for strength, seals the weld and it should last. I hate this stuff. Someone said there was other stuff out there instead of this you can use. Eh, this is what Canadian Tire had and it was on sale. So we're going to put this on. Let it harden up a little bit. We actually gotta run a few errands. Probably dark by the time we get back. Stupid daylight. And then, uh, you know, cover it in body filler. Now the other thing, I guess I can actually do this real quick because we're watching. On the seam, I always wear gloves when I use this stuff because it's terrible, but just kind of pack her in there. And then just run my finger along it. This is kind of ugly. And you're, oh, that's right in there, it's fine. We're kind of racing against the clock here, but this just kind of makes it look nice. 
<laughs> nice. Nice is all relative, I guess. So, I'll do this. I'll do the door jam. Watch bad chat video. Carry on. Oh, it might have been a little much. This stuff is very gloppy. But you can kind of go, oh, I guess that's why I put it there. Idiot, there's a weld. Don't worry, I'm just talking to myself here. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, now I've made a heck of a mess. We'll just push her in here a little bit. Um, yeah, so when I typically, for this stuff, once I get it on there kind of the way I want, I'll literally just hit it with a flap wheel and 80 grit just to kind of shape it. We're not trying to body work this stuff. It's hard and it's goopy. I hate working with it. I hate it with the passion. So we'll get this dialed, and then uh, I guess next time you see us, maybe this will be hard, or I'll be angry. Wow, went right into the door there. Oh, and people kept saying, uh, putting body filler over paint that's not prepped and all that. Man, I tell you what. Once body filler's on something, <laughs> she don't come off. There's body filler on the floor of the other garage that's been covering oil. Or anything I've ever seen, and it just, she's stuck on there. Look at this technique I have. You can hardly tell that was a terrible batch patch I put on about 20 minutes ago. No one's gonna know. All right. We'll do a little strip at the bottom. We'll get some stuff and be right back. And just like that, she's roughed in. Now, uh, I used to use an 80 grit flap disc, went over it real quick, wear a mask, fiberglass, and I was gonna load on some filler, and I don't know where any hardener is. I have just a little bit I was using for the fiberglass, so I don't know if it's the same or not, but even if it is, I don't have enough um, to do anything. So, and it's you know, nine o'clock at night, everything's closed, it is what it is. So I have to job for tomorrow. Well, I guess I'll finish this up tomorrow. But uh, yeah, we'll shoo it on there. And really, I'm kind of running out of jam anyway, so put it on there, was still kind of soft. You can really hammer it with some 40 grit on the big DA or something like that. A little bit of filler on the door, make it look a little nicer. Scuff it up, a little bit of primer. And man, we got ourselves a pretty much a hot rod. Then uh, I do want to work on getting this thing running next. Hopefully that's nothing serious. And I have some ideas about how to fix this wheel arch. I gotta do the wheel arch both the front doors, front of both doors, and then the lower quarter section on the other side. So we're really getting there. And then the inside structure, but that really doesn't have to look pretty. It just has to be real sturdy. And then door panels, we're getting there in a hurry. Oh man, there's a lot of bugs out. See you tomorrow. Okay, next day we got hardener. We got guys doing concrete work outside today. So a little noisy might just kind of get started. Lay a little filler down, let it harden up. And then, uh, work after that anyway but oh so I got this comment on, on the last video and it was embarrassing that I didn't think of it the guy was out of like 600 comments there's one guy only one of you which I, come on more should be doing this he was like basically dummy you use gray primer why wouldn't you use red oxide and I was like oh he was so right so I repainted this side with red oxide primer and the car is basically done <laughs> so so whatever this bronze color is, is basically a shiny red oxide. So yeah. Anyway, we'll get this mixed up real quick here. We're gonna, now we're, Danny's cracking up because it looks good. Red oxide is like my favorite color. Maybe that's why I was so drawn to this thing when I just saw it. I'm like, that's shiny red oxide. So we got this filler mixed up here. We're gonna bad chat the hell out of it. Load her up with filler. Whatever we don't use, we'll sand off. But again, I'm wearing gloves because I got to get up in the uh, little window area here. Didn't want to. Look at this. Expert. So we'll get this first. Stall up in here, make it look respectable. Less filler, the better, right? <laughs> Who are we kidding here? I'm going to use it all. 
So we're just gonna, again, we're just roughing this out. We're gonna do this and you know, whatever I got in the toolbox, probably 80 grit, something like that. We're gonna have to come back and do most of the car. I probably will get some paint to uh, try and color match it. But in the meantime, red oxide is what looks sweet to me. So there we go, let's get in there. Not bad, not bad. So there are a few little kind of body lines here and stuff that we're just gonna fill in with filler just cause it is what it is. It's not gonna be perfect. And for the seven actual 66 Chevy guys I ever meet in real life, they'll point it out. The rest of you, you'll be happy with it, right? So now I'll just load this on there. I could have mixed that a little better. And those guys are making a pile of noise out there. Hopefully it's not too crazy on camera. So I'm just gonna fill in the center to start. I'll hit it real quick with the DA. Once it just kind of starts to set up, we'll get the low spots. We'll fill the low spots back in with filler. And then, uh, yeah, call her a day. Like this. Danny came out and she's like, oh, it looks good already. So either she's, her standards are significantly dropping. She's just being polite or she has no idea what she was looking at. So I'll get this finished up. We'll come back and start sanding. Daisies blooming, sundress swaying in the breeze. I can't stop staring. You've put a spell on me. And I hope that you never decide to set me free. The way you're moving, it's got me moving my own feet. The greatest feeling that I could ever dare to dream. Well, there we go, roughed in. Definitely a ways to go, but the gist of it's there. We're gonna lay on a little bit of primer. So I always like to put a coat just right on the, uh, on the filler first, because it's gonna soak it right up. We'll probably put a couple of coats on real quick. Obviously, I didn't do a whole lot to the door. If anything, I'm gonna primer right over it. And I know you guys are gonna lose your minds a little bit in the comments, but we're going for the patina look anyway, so I'll sand it down, screw around with it, and I gotta get some color match. All that sort of stuff in the meantime. Just this alone, look at that. Looks like a terrible patch versus I just welded the door shut, right? So, I'll get this taken care of. Maybe we'll do a little time lapse on the actual paint job. And I'll come right back. Daniela. And I'm taking Darling, would you be mine? And I hope you know I will love you for the rest of my life Let's not waste time Well, there we have it. So it's all one color. I know it's not perfect. I know there's probably too much filler. We could use patch panels and all that sort of stuff, but honestly, the work that's been done is suiting this car. Uh, a full quarter panel and proper door posts and all that would have been nice. Absolutely. The two quarter panels would have cost more money just in panels than the whole car did. And at the end of the day, we have ourselves a fun driver that's solid. It's not just a bunch of mud all over a bunch of rust. It's all good metal underneath. It'll be primer. We'll paint match it best we can. It'll look neat. We're gonna have ourselves a 66 full-size Chevy two-door post, which you just hardly see around. Big block, turbo 400 with a 12 bolt. Be a fun cruise around town, tire fryer, 
who, who wouldn't like this car, right? And uh, you know, just keep in mind, it, it is what it is. The work's being done to this suits the car. I have that 55 Chevy Nomad. I'm not working on it because I've lost interest in it. It's not a whole lot of fun. because It's all sorts of body work and it's just at such a high level. Because the car deserves better, I don't find that enjoyable. I love doing this stuff. And if this is what you want to do, don't let anybody tell you different. Get out there and butcher something together. Up next, working on the motor. I hate when things work and all of a sudden don't. So I'm hoping it's a you know, loose battery cable or something very simple. Uh, and I hope it's not a whole video <laughs> on the next video, but that's what we're gonna start on next. This thing has to be running and driving. It drives me nuts when I have something that's a, a lump in the garage that I can't move around. So hopefully we just start with that. It's something real simple. And then we're gonna move on to the rest of the body work on this fine hot rod, or I'll be pulling my hair out because something's let go in the motor, which I'm not happy about. But that's really in this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, do me a huge favor, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends, share the video if you don't mind. We're working hard on that 100K and uh, I wanna get there, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't uh, think I did until we're almost there. But, man, I love this car. I gotta get back to working on it.